All right. CRQs, our favorite thing in the world. Remind me, if I see historical circumstances, what am I being asked? What happened before that led to it? Exactly, right? So this entire source here, if you were to read this, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you because it's really, really long, and I want to make sure we cover a lot. But this entire source is talking about how Great Britain is becoming industrial, and they're using machines to produce textiles and not by hand anymore. OK? So what the question is asking, though, is what led to all these things? What led to Great Britain starting the Industrial Revolution is what the question is really asking you guys. Any ideas? Because this is tough. If you have a factory, yeah. what, what are you going to need in that factory in coal. order? People. Oh, they had coal and iron. OK, right. So let's talk about coal and iron. That's geographic circumstances, right? You need people willing to work in those horrible jobs. Why were people willing to take horrible factory jobs back then? Because exactly. So they need other jobs. Machines start to replace the workers on the farms. So those farm workers do what? They go to the city. They, they, join, they, join, they, go into, they move to the cities and join the factory. Yeah, workers. they move to the cities and take the factory jobs, right? That's what happened beforehand. Okay? Otherwise, you would not ever have people willing to work in these, her these terrible jobs. And if you didn't have people willing to work in the terrible factory jobs, you don't have any factories, and therefore you don't have industrialization. Does that make sense? Yes. So what, watch how we answer this one, okay? I'll say one historical circumstance, forgive my chicken scratch handwriting, was that Britain experienced the agricultural revolution in which machines replaced the need for as many, let me rephrase that, for large numbers of farm workers. Okay, I'm just gonna connect it to the source now. These workers then moved to cities to take jobs in factories. So when you guys, when you guys do historical circumstances, ask yourself what happened beforehand and then try to connect what you put to what you see in the source. Again, if you read this, it would have talked about people working in factories. Yeah. So this is just an explanation for why people were willing to do that. Does that make sense? Well, let's go to this one. Point of view question. Remind me what point of view means. Like their opinion. Yeah. Opinion, right? How the author feels. So let's take a look at this one. I think it's important that we read this one. This excerpt is taken from John Fielden's The Curse of the Factory System. This work was originally published in London in 1836. He was a textile owner who was deeply committed to the cause of social reform. What does it mean to have reform? Like changes? Change. So even though the guy owned a business, he wanted to make some changes to try to help people. He discusses the problems faced by businessmen like himself who were trying to make a profit and protect their workers at the same time. So based on this, I think we could already infer, how is he going to feel about factories based on this information? Like probably not going to like him, right? Because he wants to make changes. He probably says the factories are trash. So here is the curse, the curse of our factory system. As improvements in machinery have gone on, the avarice, meaning self-interest of masters, like the bosses, has prompted many to exact more labor from their hands than, were, than they were fitted by nature to perform. And those have, who have wished for the hours of labor to be less for all ages than the legislature would even sanction have had no alternative but to conform more or less to the prevailing practice or ab abandon the trade altogether. This is very confusing. But basically what he's saying here is that people are being forced to work harder than they're capable of doing. Yeah, harder than the machines, okay? And all the businesses are going along with that practice, otherwise they're gonna go out of business because they can't compete, right? When one business is making their workers work 16 hour shifts and the other business says, oh, you can go off, you can, take, you can go home after eight hours, the business with the workers working eight hours might not be able to like, make as many sales, right? So everyone's going along with this evil practice. So what, so far anyway, what do you think his opinion is about factories? And it, we should, let me specify, we should go above he thinks it's good or bad. How is it negative, according to this guy? It does what, the factory? 
work more hours than they're capable of working, right? That's what we've seen so far. So let's do that. I'll put John Fielden's point of view was that the factory system harmed the workers. And what we want to do with questions like this is offer some piece of evidence to support it. How should we start the second sentence? This can be inferred, this can be inferred from the source when it states, okay? And I'm going to paraphrase because I don't want to waste my time quoting that massive chunk. So I'll say when it states that workers are working more hours than they are physically able to work. People just falling asleep at their jobs. The next one is a cause and effect. When you guys get these, what should you do? Remind me the process. Three sentences. It's probably going to be two to three sentences. Use one of them. You got to use both. Right. Yeah. You start with telling me how document one caused document two. But instead of saying document one, document two, you tell me what instead? The main idea. 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 So the main okay. idea from document one, I'll go back, don't worry. The main idea from document one is, if you had read it, you would know it's the British starting the Industrial Revolution. And due to that, the main idea from document two is that factories are bad for the workers, right? So main idea from document one leads to main idea of document two. So Britain beginning the Industrial Revolution, main idea from document one, that's what that was, led to, main idea from document two, led to factories causing harm to workers. This gets you halfway there. Right, because what we're missing now is the explain. So you tell me, how does the factory harm the worker? Um, there's no health codes. No health codes, right? So the, the conditions are really bad. Hours. Long hours. There's no minimum wage. No minimum wage. So let's explain. This is because wages were low, the working conditions were poor, and Yes, the hours, right. And the working hours were too long. Okay, the wages kind of goes with a lack of minimum wage type thing. That's it. Two sentences. Yeah. Done. Right? You do not. You should not. Your hand is going to be dead by the end of this test. Don't waste your time filling up this entire piece of paper. Don't be, don't be doing massive quotes from documents. Don't do it. It's not worth it. I know so many kids that